Let us briefly review the past vignettes that we have taken and try to put everything in its perspective. We have seen the fact that natural man with his mind always got himself into trouble. We have seen also man with his emotions and that even brought him into deeper trouble. And so it was necessary for Christ to come into the picture to help us guide our minds and our feelings. And the only way we can do it is by subjecting our minds and feelings to divine revelation. It is important, therefore, that we know divine revelation, that we know it in its fullness and as perfectly as we can. The moment we know divine revelation, then we can now place our minds and our emotions subject to divine revelation. Now, when we place our minds and emotions under divine revelation, that entails an act of obedience, wherein the mind and the feeling try to join together and obey what they have learned from divine revelation. We had seen the divine revelation are the things that Christ said and did when he was on earth, and part of it, according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, is found in sacred scriptures, but most of it is found in the tradition of the Catholic Church or the so-called fathers of the Church. Our knowledge of divine revelation is so important that in uh, the last chapters of the gospel when Christ was about to ascend to heaven, it was the only role that Christ gave to his church, wherein he called his apostles and told them to go to all nations, baptizing them. But the more important instruction is to teach all my commandments and how to do them. And because divine revelation is so important, Christ saw to it that he established a church. And the primary and only goal of the church is to transmit divine revelation down through the centuries. Of course, when they transmit this as much as possible, they mustn't change it. Because the moment they modify it and change it, then it is no longer divine revelation. The greatest tragedy that can happen to what Christ has left us is the fact that when human element enters into the picture, then this human element begins to distort all the teachings of Christ. In the Catholic Church, it is quite obvious, and everybody knows it, that the succession of bishops and priests from the apostles is very clear. But the reason why this succession from the apostles to the present time is important is precisely so that the bishops in the year 100 would get the entire divine revelation and give it to the people of that era, and the next bishop would get the entire revelation and transmit it to their era. We have a problem these days that the bishops who are supposed to transmit divine revelation had come to us from the succession from Peter, but they are empty-handed. There is no divine revelation in their hands to transmit to us. 
they seem to be like a delivery boy of a pizza parlor. We ordered some pizza, divine revelation, and the delivery boy arrived empty-handed. So what is happening? We look for it all around us and it is nowhere to be found. Now that is a disaster beyond all proportions. How can we submit our minds and our feelings now to divine revelation if it is nowhere to be found? Because there is no revelation, we have the problem that the mind will now start doing what it wants and the feelings would start following what it desires. And this only means one thing, a return to paganism. Now that we are faced by this situation in which our bishops have proven their succession from the apostles, they were given the job of transmitting divine revelation to us, and yet they came empty handed. Now that is a big problem. We had mentioned in the past vignettes about the greatest spiritual and Catholic writers of the 20th century. And we mentioned some of them like Hilary Bellock, Gilbert Chesterton, Ronald Knox, and John Newman. The funny thing with these people, especially with Ronald Knox and John Newman, is this, that both of them were so enthusiastic to prove that the Anglican religion is the true religion of Christ. Now that is how intelligent people behave. You know, like in our case, we Catholics, the first thing that we should do is to prove to ourselves that the Catholic Church truly is the Church of Christ. And before we transfer to another sect or another religion, we have to find out if theirs is the true Church of Christ. But we have to begin first by finding out if our Christian Church is the true Church of Christ. And Ronald Knox and John Newman were so enthusiastic in this endeavor that they studied very well, of all things, the fathers of the church. And what happened? As they were trying to prove that the Catholic Church was not the true church and that the Anglican Church was the true Church of Christ, they discovered the opposite. Getting the signs of the true Church of Christ from the fathers of the Church, they applied it to the Anglican Church, and the Anglican Church failed miserably. And here was the Catholic Church, whom they considered as a hypocrite, a despicable thing, and little by little, because they were open-minded, they discovered that this was the true Church of Christ. And so, in a hurry, they became Catholics, they became priests, Catholic priests. One became a Catholic cardinal and now is blessed, is a blessed in the Catholic Church. And Ronald Knox even became a Monsignor. And so what if the delivery boy comes to your house without a pizza? Well, you have to go to the source. And so that is precisely what John Newman, Ronald Knox did. Not knowing what divine revelation is, they went directly to the fathers of the church and they learned it from them. They did not learn it from the hands of any bishop. In fact, they did not even learn it from the Catholic Church. 
they learn that the Catholic Church is the true church and everything else directly from the fonts of scriptures and the divine word. These writers of the 20th century considered the greatest Catholic writers had gone directly to the fathers of the church to learn the totality of the teachings of Christ. And then afterwards, they perfected in the obedience of these teachings. That is why they became great men, live holy lives, and one is now nearly a saint, and Chesterton is now being worked for canonization. Because some of them have become bishops and priests, they, in their turn, now connected to the succession of St. Peter, are transmitting divine revelation. The contents of divine revelation is God's way of teaching us how he wants to be loved. It is not a human form of love. It is a divine love that God wants us to love him with. And therefore, no man can teach this to us. Only God can teach it to us. That is how important divine revelation is and is the only guide for our minds and our feelings. So forget the mind, forget the feelings. We must focus ourselves completely to divine revelation, to that divine love by which God wants us to love him. And if we can do that continuously, that is what you call the Catholic mind. God bless you.